Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. So I have been cutting and splitting firewood for the last four years, and I wanted to share with you guys something that it has taken me four years to figure out. Stick around. So if you've spent any time at all with chainsaws and firewood, you're probably familiar with the feeling of taking a brand new chain out of the box, throwing it on the bar, and then the weight of the chainsaw is enough to just melt right down through the log. You're probably also familiar with having a dull chain, and there's nothing more frustrating than having to put your body weight on the saw and lean into it and use the dogs and apply leverage to try to run through a log. And by the time you get through three rounds, you're huffing and puffing and sweating and just frustrated as anything. So what I wanted to talk about today was how to avoid prematurely dulling out your chainsaw chain and then how to fix it once it is dull. Because if you spend any time with firewood, you know it's a regular maintenance item. No matter how much care you take in cutting your firewood, it's going to get dull eventually. So one of the most common mistakes people make when they're cutting firewood is cutting their logs on the ground and overextending the nose of their bar into the dirt on the other side of the log when they're trying to finish the cut. It's a lot better to cut 75% of the way through uh, all the way down the log and then roll that log over and finish your cut on the top side of the log. It's going to keep your saw out of the dirt. And the number one enemy of any chainsaw chain is any non-wood material. I'm talking rocks, mud, and dirt. Now cutting 75% of the way through the log and then flipping it back over and cutting the other 25% is kind of the old school way to do it. There's better ways to do it now to avoid hitting the dirt. Um, I've got a tractor, a loader, and a grapple. That way I can lift the logs up off the ground and cut them up in the air. Uh, there's also much cheaper products like the Timberjack, the Log Ox 3-in-1 Forestry Tool. Basically it's a PV with a kickstand underneath it and it allows you to lift the log up off the ground and you can cut it away from the ground and not have to worry about hitting the dirt. Now some other things you might run into that'll dull out your chain. Let's say you're cutting firewood back in your woods and you skid your logs out of the woods. Even if you get the log up off the ground, if you've got mud on that log, the mud on the outside of the bark is gonna dull your chain. Also the bark itself. Some species of trees have more gnarly bark than others. That's why some of these sawmills you see have debarkers on them. They actually, right before the saw blade enters the log, there's a debarker that'll remove that bark and it helps to stretch out the life of that sawmill blade. So anyway, the chain that I have on this bar right now needs a little bit of work. I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in this log and see what it looks like. And then I'm gonna do the most cringeworthy thing you can do with a chainsaw. I'm gonna stick it in the ground and completely trash it because I wanna take it up, put it on the vise, and see if we can't bring it back to life. So this is gonna be our test log here. This is about 13 inches. What we'll do is we'll cut it right now with the chain the way it is, and then we'll stick it in the ground, try to cut it again. I'm assuming it's not gonna cut hardly at all once we stick it in the ground. Then we'll take it up to the shop, throw it on the vise, and see if we can't get it back to out of the box sharp again. All right, so yeah, that chain was pretty dull. Normally that G372 XP just shreds right through some wood. Let's go ahead and stick it in the ground and really make sure she's spent. All right, so we're up here in the garage. We've got our chainsaw chain all dulled out. We've got the wood stove going for heat. Now, I have made chainsaw sharpening videos in the past when I thought I knew what I was talking about, but I still wasn't able to get that fresh out of the box sharp chain that I was looking for. I've tried all the gadgets you can think of, one of them being like these little Dremel bits that you can put in the end of your chain or the end of your uh, cordless drill. And basically this just fits perfectly. It's just like a regular file, fits perfectly in your chainsaw chain and it's supposed to sharpen it, but I haven't gotten great results with it. It'll resharpen a chain to an extent, but you don't get that fresh out of the box, razor sharp chain you're looking for. 
Another thing that I've tried, if you see over here, is this chainsaw bench grinder. And same concept. All these tools and gadgets are supposed to make chainsaw sharpening easy. And they do that, but to an extent, because they don't give you the finished product you're looking for. In my honest opinion, I think the real only way to get a chain fresh out of the box sharp is to do it by hand. And I'll show you what I think I figured out. The last time I did it, I got really good results. We'll test that today to see if I get those same results. All right, so here is a close-up look of your chainsaw chain. And when you're filing by hand, there's three areas you need to pay attention to. The first one is this raker right here, or depth gauge. And that does exactly what it sounds like. It sets the depth that your chainsaw chain is going to bite into that wood. If you don't have that file down enough, your chainsaw is gonna rev really high, it's not gonna bite into the wood, and you're gonna be throwing what looks like flour instead of nice wood chips. If you have it set too low, your chainsaw chain is gonna bite really hard. It's gonna bog down the saw. You're probably gonna bind and pinch the bar and the saw is gonna kick around like crazy. It's really dangerous to take your rakers down too much. It might seem appealing because your chainsaw is gonna bite better, uh, but really it's a dangerous situation, especially if you get near the nose of the chain. So the next section is really important and it's called the gullet. And the reason it's so important is because most people don't focus on the gullet. Most people spend their time on the cutting edge of the tooth, which is the very top. They think, okay, as long as that's sharp right there, I'm good, the chain's gonna cut. But if you ever watch Buck and Billy Ray, his famous slogan is get the gullet. People forget that the shape of your tooth here needs to be like a half moon. So the reason the gullet is so important, if you can picture the wood coming through the tooth, the depth gauge here is gonna set how much that cutting edge can take off. And as that shaving gets shaved off the log and starts to come around here, it's gonna curl around the bottom side of that gullet. Now, if your gullet isn't nice and round like a crescent moon, it's going to cause that wood chip to break off prematurely. And then you're not gonna be removing as much material as you could be if you were taking nice big long carrot peel chips out of that log. So the last thing we need to talk about is pretty obvious and that is the actual cutting tooth. That needs to be razor sharp so that it can actually bite into the wood. So the trick that I learned when filing by hand is when I first started, I thought that this round file here when you come through is gonna hit your cutting edge as well as your gullet at the same time. And it's not. What you have to do is I usually do three passes like this pushing back this way and then I'll do three passes pushing at a 45 degree angle back up towards the cutting edge of the tooth. And you'll see when I do that, I'm kind of grabbing the top here and pulling the chain almost out of the channel of the bar when I cut up like this. So that is the trick that I learned. You need to file your gullet and your cutting edge separately. Now granted, you're using the same tool to do it, but you need to do it with two different motions. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the chain brake on. And then we're gonna go ahead and file the gullet first. So I'm gonna do three passes. And then now we're gonna go ahead and push up and file that top cutting edge. So now that tooth is razor sharp. If I go ahead and stick my finger on there, that tooth is gonna bite right into my skin. So that three pass rule is kind of a general rule of thumb. It's a starting point. Before you move on, you still want to examine each tooth and make sure that your gullet is a crescent moon shape and your top cutting edge is sharp. If not, you might need a few more passes before you move to the next tooth.
All right, so the last thing we need to talk about are the rakers here. Now you can see my raker is already well below my cutting edge. And I kind of like taking the approach that Andrew said from Easton Made Wood Splitters. He did a sharpening video as well. And he said what he does is just trial and error. You know, he'll take one pass with his flat file across the top of that raker and then go put it in some wood. And if it's cutting great, you're done. If it's not, take another pass and just keep taking passes until it's, the saw is cutting how you want it to perform. So yeah, I think this chain is ready to go. We've got our razor sharp cutting edge. We've got our gullet dug out in the shape of a crescent moon and we've got our raker set where we want them. Let's go see how much faster this chain is in that 13 inch log. So as you can see, that was a big improvement over our original time and a huge improvement over the dull chain after it had been run through the dirt. If you have any extra tips for sharpening chainsaws that I didn't cover, leave them in the comments below. It'll help me out and everybody else who watches these videos. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and check out some other videos. Thanks for watching.